recording. Uh, hello again. late right now. It's uh, 2 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, a response to a little bit of subjectivity by Piro 314. Um, to start about an hour ago I think I posted a few comments on the video um, earlier today about 15 minutes after you put the video out um, I actually started writing down well, you can't really see it can you? you see that I wrote down everything everything that you said this time um, I, I don't really know why I wanted to so I did and uh, therefore this is probably going to be a long video uh, but I will attempt to address everything um, or anything that sticks out whenever a thought comes to mind any thoughts that I've had I'm in the process of writing all this down um, I pretty much would listen to three or four words pause the video you know have a thought but write down what you were saying and uh, just constantly breaking it up like that into little bits um, gave me a lot of thoughts so I'll try to recall all of them or as many of them as are relevant I guess you know time <laughs> really I mean, what, what do we have time energy you know you don't have to watch this it's gonna be long and boring unless this is what you want you know, and that's something that I'm continuously asking myself, or wanting to ask you, after almost every sentence. You know, what What do you really want? Um, I'll get on that more when uh, when those particular sentences come up, or when I had those thoughts. Oh. So, let's see. I find the reaction to this idea that we should study will with physics interesting. I mean, one, a lot of people are projecting on me their own desire to verify their current notions. Like, how is it going to make will free if we study it? It might show that it's not... It might, we don't know, getting the answer will answer it, and you think like, my curiosity is not tempered by, you know, in proportion to how much I think it's going to be confirmed. I don't want to answer questions just because I think I know the answer and want to be right. It's just cooler often to get the answer and not only be wrong, but be like, wow, what's the answer even mean? You know, a lot of answers just become, you know, a process of elimination for other answers and actually raise more questions.
and a lot of people are like, well, it's just going to be reactions. Is this just a series of reactions? Um, I think I really hit on something when I commented to you. I made a comment and uh, I think I just posted it on your video. And uh, said I, I pretty much I don't know much about all this philosophy bullshit. I, got, I think it's bullshit. You, you may not. Your viewers may not. I'm sure a lot of your viewers highly value philosophy. And, uh, and it was valuable before science, in my opinion. Um, it's, it's dead and dying and pointless and pretty much useless and a waste of time now. Um, sorry to say that, but that is how I feel most of the time when it comes to philosophy. Although it's a amusing mental exercise. For the most part, it, it was a precursor to science. Um, a lot of it was hijacked by religion, and that was really unfortunate. And uh, and some of it has been reclaimed by science, and now we're using it to perform science. Um, but we're, we've taken it much further um, with the addition of you know mathematics logic, um, peer review, and a scientific method. <coughs> but uh, in my comment, and just a little bit more background, um, I wasn't brought up religious. As far back as I can remember, I've always wanted to be a scientist of some sort. Started out wanting to be a zoologist. Um, and I saw an uh, Aurora Borealis in 1989, the same one that took out the power grid in uh, eastern Canada, I, I believe in New England as well. Um, I saw it with my own eyes. I was out that night. Um, I don't really want to tell the whole story. But anyway, after that, um, I realized that there was something, something really big that uh, people weren't telling me about and uh, had I been had my mind been littered or um, had I been religious it uh, and my whole life would have turned out differently but luckily uh, never never really religious but I did look into religion as well as astronomy um, particularly relativity, um, quantum mechanics, nuclear physics, um, energy, philosophy at the time, higher mathematics, all sorts of things um, from the age of, uh, started off mostly in astronomy, but at 13 I pretty much played around with everything. Um, didn't do my schoolwork. Pretty much just, you know, said school is an absolute waste of time when there are so many interesting things going on. Um, and I want to get involved in them as soon as possible. And uh, so I thought studying them myself would do it. Didn't, uh, didn't pan out very well. But um, I did play around with some alternative religion. I studied world religions. Um, all my life I read encyclopedias, and at the end of the encyclopedia, um, there would be a whole bunch of lists, references, other subjects you could check out, and I would go from those, you know, and go to another one. And uh, P was always my favorite because I could go to either physics or philosophy. 
and uh, read through that. And then uh, at the back, there would be a lot of things to check out because they're very um, broad subjects. So, so I did. I looked into philosophy a little bit, and I realized cosmology was pretty much it. That's what I wanted to do. But I was also so fascinated with physics that I thought metaphysics would be an interesting thing. Um, turns out I didn't buy it at all. It didn't. It didn't make sense to me at thirteen. So I really didn't get into it. I, I still don't see it as valuable as physics itself. Um, but maybe I still don't understand it. Maybe I, maybe I don't understand anything in philosophy. <laughs> you know? Um, maybe, maybe I don't want to. Maybe that'll spoil the fun. Like science doesn't spoil the fun. But, um, so, that's just part of it, because, you know, they did that 200 character comment shit now. So, uh, I wanted to throw that in there that I, um, just a little bit, one sentence on my history of philosophy and, and those concepts. But uh, I asked you the question, have you thought of life as a capacitor for, what did I say, reactions? Um, I want to expand on that a little bit more. Um, I mean, just think back. Think back to your childhood. You know, think about what's going on right now. You're watching this, and you're thinking of things to say. And you're trying to store them. Um, you know, maybe you will. Maybe you store them all. Maybe you're far more intelligent than I am. I have no way of gauging that. Uh, maybe you're just different. Your your brain works differently than mine does. Um, I would hope so. I would hope we all work differently. Just a little bit. But for the most part, we're pretty similar. Uh, so the capacitor idea. We could work on this a little bit. Um, you could think of it either on a molecular level. Um, you could think of it on a cellular level. Or you could think of it on a level of a mind or a consciousness. Um, we we want to act impulsively when... Uh, like when we're inebriated, uh, you know, or uh, inhibitions, we don't hold back as much. So, that would probably be something to look into if that's what you're after. Which again, I'm not really sure what you're after. And I jokingly think that you're, you want to be like, uh, who was it, Django Fett in uh, Star Wars. You want to create a whole bunch of clones of yourself. And uh, I, I can't blame you. I mean, there are... I just I want to jump around. Maybe I shouldn't read all this. Maybe I should just jump around. Yeah, fuck it. Maybe that'll save time. Most of it's just reading anyway, right? It's just in a storybook. Um, I was a bit insulted, personally, when you said... Oh, let's see. It's not the sort of thing that you say, oh, well, they just need to fill in, show me where there's even a half-assed consciousness that you can imagine filling into just a mammal level of consciousness. Yeah, that, that was really insulting. 
I don't know you, and you don't know me. Um, I don't know if you have children. I don't know if you plan on having children. Um, I don't know if I plan on having children. And I don't know if anyone else that's watching this um, has children or plans on having children. But we were children, all of us. And, uh, yeah. And, and I know in an earlier video that you said, you know, you look at children and you see something in there. But, uh, this... Show me where there's even a half-assed consciousness that you can imagine filling into just a mammal level of consciousness. I mean, just a hint of what you think can be followed upon. children um, and I know we already do that and what you want to do is do something that's not what we've been doing but yet at the same time you want to repeat this you want to create another form of consciousness perhaps so that you can do it better so that you can leave out um, our weaknesses our um, Or crutches, or whatever you think of as a crutch. Um, maybe you want to genetically engineer um, life, genetically engineer consciousness. Um, you know, and I know we will. We will. It's it's inevitable. If if it's not allowed here on Earth, we're going to do it out in space or on Mars, or in the future at some point somewhere even on a desert island it's gonna happen it's inevitable absolutely inevitable and religion resisting it and resisting tampering with stem cells and all that shit is just postponing the inevitable um, I think the best thing that we can do is uh, prepare for it you know genetic engineering and uh, perhaps even even artificial intelligence conscious machines you know we need to we need to prepare for it and get the uh, level of education around the world up to speed especially when it comes to politicians this is fucking bullshit that's uh, that we were born into a world where politicians are fucking con men they're no better than preachers and pastors and clergymen. They're, they're fucking idiots. Absolutely. Um, I really would like to see an intellectual class uprising. If there ever will be or could be such a thing. We're so fucking selfish and greedy and independent. But maybe we'll get over that. I mean, maybe uh, humility and, and uh, love and kindness and all that junk. All that stuff. We'll, uh, we'll bring the intellectual class together and we'll stop competing if it wasn't about money. And that's another thing that I found um, insulting. when you mention profit. Maybe that's what you want. Maybe you haven't really given it a lot of thought as to uh, what the limitation of finances does for us. Um, you know, especially when people can control it. Um, who gets what? How much is in circulation? Interest rates? And all that shit. There are too few people governing that. But if we're going to keep this financial system, we need to make it a democratic process. Um, which it should be. You know, in its simplest form, it would be. But it's not. They, they are in control of it. And that's where the power thing comes into play that I'd made 
mentioned in the first video that people have power over us, uh, religion, power over the mind, and uh, finances, money, banking, all that shit, power over the resources, distribution of resources, and that's just labor, energy, shit, I mean money has just slipped under the radar, and those in control of it's just fuck things up, in my opinion. So I'm not interested in that, and uh, I just like hearing other people saying that that's what they want or expect. Um, so that's why I'm still a little reluctant to um, continue feeding you. But why not? I know at some point we'll get over all this. I just don't, I don't like the idea of things becoming uh, like patented, patents bought and never applied. It uh, it really ruins those things. And intellectual property, what the fuck is that? Um, when I tell you these things, like I can say I still own them. No. No, ideas are out there. We can choose to share or not. And when there's monetary value on ideas, people are reluctant to share. But uh, I did like the part where you talked about making predictions and how you did do it for the fun. Don't we all? You know? Um, I mean, just look at look at the Christians with their doomsday stuff. You know? And the uh, just about all religions. They have a cataclysm or whatever, end of the world nonsense. And even I, most of my life, I was concerned about asteroids. I mean, legitimate concerns about NASA not being uh, powerful enough to stop it, not having enough astronomers looking out for our sake. Um, but given the... Uh, I don't really want to go into that. That's a whole, whole big subject. Um, the capacitors. Let's just try to focus on that. Maybe I'll reference this at any other time. Um, so, we not only have our own thoughts, but we experience the world outside of us and it's really messed up hearing myself talk and trying to think of this at the same time it's creating like a feedback loop it's just fucking with my head um everything every form of sensory input and every form of mental imagery I don't just mean visual imagery, but, you know, um, every form of a pattern, every form of a process that we can, we can react to creates a sort of thought, a sort of feeling. Oh. And, you know, they're both governed by by the strength of the pathways in, in the chemicals and what chemicals are available. Um, I'm a bit tired, so there's not a lot of electricity. Um, I'm glad, though, you've, you've had me thinking about stuff and all this, like, philosophy stuff. Um, not a big fan, but you started making videos and started talking about physics, and that's what I'm really interested in. Not that I know a lot about it, but I enjoy it immensely. So, in life, and yeah, I love life, um, you know, that's probably the thing that's got the most of my attention lately. 
is what's going on. You know, what life is. And, uh, again, I'm not a big fan of the whole consciousness, free will, um, compatibilism, determinism. Um, I do kind of feel that everything's kind of predetermined, though. Um, but not it's not just a continuous process. We have to keep that in mind. We don't just it doesn't just happen and then we react on it. Um, we store our reactions. That's a, a reference to the capacitor. It's the best thing I can think of. Um, there may be a a better analogy, but uh, we store. Memories, reactions, I mean, you, you think of some of the most memorable times in your life um, where your parents, you know, told you, or, or maybe somebody at school, you know, or anyone, any human, um, did something to you, you know, called you a, a fucking retard, you know, what are you going to do, pussy, huh? You're just a little pussy. You're not gonna, you're not gonna do anything, you know. And then you don't do anything. But you think about it. You think, what could I have done? What should I have done? You know. And then you think, I, I could have done this. I could have done that. He might have done this, and I would have done that. Um, we plan ahead. You know. And these are very. That's that's. You know, those are very memorable times. You know, you'll think when when you're in a fight, if you ever if you ever got into fights. Uh, but you know, you think I was in that situation, and I was doing that when I should have been doing this, or you know, so. things I haven't I haven't looked back at the comments I know you responded to one of my videos with uh, comments I don't look at my own videos too often um, I don't always respond to the little comment bubble thing that says that somebody's commented on something or that there's something I should look at I more just watch videos I more just like to learn things that are going on in the world which is why I don't make, uh, you know, 2,600 videos like you've got. Then again, I haven't been making videos. But I'd like to, though. I mean, that's one of the most important reasons that I came here to YouTube, was to store history, store thoughts, um, create a process, observe it. It's one of the reasons I was so fascinated with uh, MMORPGs, which is another thing. You know, I don't know if you've talked about it or not, about, uh, you know, virtual worlds and pretty much storing your life in there, um, which it wouldn't really be storing your life, but you create a life in there and it gets stored and it can be studied, much like Facebook and uh, YouTube and, you know, our browser history and everything else. It's all uh, being studied and sold to the highest bidders. We're being herded. Herded. Like, uh. <coughs> like ants. On a freaking pheromone trail. And then just watching. Watching and. Watching us create our own tracks. Selling the information of our tracks, you know, on Facebook, our likes, on YouTube, our likes, 
history, all of it, comments, all that stuff. Um, but I like that we can create our own, so we have a little say in it. We have a little say in the future here. And that's what also what attracted me to the internet about 20 years ago. Is, uh, you know, so new, but being able to communicate with people around the world so fast and post messages on bulletin boards and, um, when the internet first started up when I was in a, like the world wide web essentially browsers um, like internet not internet explorer not Netscape Netscape was the first one that I used but trying to think there were some before that yeah, not important maybe maybe it is but this is at 31 minutes now um, think about the capacitors and just just try to elaborate on that more and when you asked about when you mentioned about magnetism and, um, and oh, what did you call it? Emergent. Emergent. Oh, maybe I didn't write it down. No, I didn't write that word down. Um, you know what I mean though fire versus magnetism a lot of little little bits just waiting to be aligned as opposed to potential waiting for spark to ignite it yeah Aristotle really fucked things up didn't he But they just didn't know. They didn't know what we know now. We don't know shit compared to the people that will be watching this tomorrow, in a year, in a decade, in a century. So fucking stupid. But only because we can imagine better. is nice. I just wish we didn't dwell on the, like I shouldn't even have said we're fucking stupid, obviously. Humans are the most intelligent things right now in the known universe. The whole thing, everything that we know, we're it. So, We've got a long, long road ahead of us. But I really... I do I do want to mention... There's a lot that I'd like to mention. I'd like to, you know... I'm so glad that YouTube made it so that I can uh, make videos longer than 15 minutes. Just recently, I think it was last week, that they gave me that ability before I was breaking them up. Fuck, let's do that. So, um, your, your humility, you use that word, didn't you? Um, yeah, I enjoyed that. Well, first of all, I think your prediction that this is a fill-in-the-blank thing is like, lacks humility, because you should at least show me, right? Like, I could show you why... I think that those three algorithms I mentioned, and I haven't looked at those three algorithms. Um, I I only watch your videos every now and then, and I'll watch a couple for a few days, and then you know my my brain's off on uh, black holes or exoplanets or abiogenesis or something. You know, it's always something. I just try to keep busy. That's all I do. I'm, pretty good at learning, 
that's all I, uh, I've ever really enjoyed doing is learning and uh, teaching when I know the subject and uh, you know the uh, like the syllabus and knowing what to teach ahead of time helps a lot and this is kind of odd I'd, I'm not really good at this but I'll get better um but uh yeah, those algorithms, I'd like to see that. Um, I could show you why I think that those three algorithms I mentioned in fast computers could solve the Turing test. T Turing? Yeah, Turing. Be like, it's just a little bit of a picture there of how you could fill in, fill it in. You know, you went back and forth with it. It's not fill in the blanks you know, the word just. Um, yeah. I'm sure this is really easy to solve. I, I have a feeling that you're kind of, you, you've spent a lot of time studying philosophy and you don't want that to go to waste. Um, you know, I've even, I've even heard of people like these new age people, you know, these quantum consciousness fucktards, who are trying to say that all of science is a waste of time. You know, we just have to forget everything we know and we can learn everything. How fucking stupid is that? That's, that's just as terrible as religion. And it's disgusting absolutely disgusting and it'll never it'll never fly N not now no. I mean we we're pretty sure of it but there's a lot of people that are eating it up um, as they lose faith in religion and they think well science is a good thing oh and this has you know this has faith I like faith I remember that from religion faith was such a nice thing So, let's say I ask you to imagine something that instead of this halfway decent stuff we're getting in phone service, now that it's super good, you know, because that with a computer fast enough, with the current software, it could do a lot better. So you could imagine that, right? Fuck yeah, I could imagine that. And that does kind of scare me. I mean, it's just, it's not... <laughs> I know it's inevitable. I know it. I just know it. But it does kind of scare me. When that phone rings, and then, you know, I say hello, and then somebody else is like, hello? Or, uh, or, you know, hi, is Matthew there? Um, You know, and I respond, and it responds, and I ask questions, you know, usually no matter who it is, bill collectors, whatever. Um, I need to know, before I even tell them, like, they'll say, is this Matthew? You know, I'll say, who's asking? You know, good thing that my, uh, my mother taught me when I answer the phone if somebody's asking for it, you know, find out who it is. So I can kind of use that to my advantage as if I'm not, you know, verifying that that's me but I always think if they really cared enough they'd search on the internet they'd find my name they'd go to YouTube they'd hear my voice they'd know they wouldn't have to ask they'd know me but you know, when it's one of seven billion people on the planet or one of the one and a half billion people in India You never know. You know. I think it's only about one, one point one or one point billion right now. But you know, one of the parts that I really liked um, 
you seem pretty sincere. I don't know if you're just fucking doing that, though. That's the thing that I hate about us. We're so deceptive. With our fucking neuro-linguistic programming. Fucking social engineering. never know who's who's doing what for what reasons, but ultimately, ultimately I think it's good. I don't know what that is, that positivism. Uh, maybe I don't know. <laughs> you probably do. But or just optimism. Materialistic optimism. Such a thing. I don't know. Um, but there is definitely greed, and greed and selfishness are disgusting traits. So, if you're ever writing a program for artificial intelligence, um, try to leave those out. But unfortunately, like I tried to mention in, I think, one of the first videos, or uh, actually in your responses to one of the first videos um, when you mentioned, yeah, I like it, but it's long. I'm going to respond to it, you know, periodically. And, and, uh, and then I respond with, uh, yeah, I wanted to know what you said that we are subtracting things from our equations, from our algorithms, from our, uh, from our plans. And I'm concerned that we need to continue doing that. I mean, that we need to. Um, that we may, we may have to add the shit. We may need to add the greed and the selfishness. Um, we may have to add the aggression. I mean, are, are you ready for that? If it's necessary, um, the desire to um, fight, you know, like that, the, the fight or flight. Are you going to put that in a robot? Or are you going to put that in a machine? I mean, I don't know. I didn't read Isaac Asimov's iRobot series or any of uh, that sort of science fiction as much as I am a, a fan of Isaac Asimov um, no, I read more of his, uh, his non-fiction the history of physics but uh, yeah I'm I'm not ready I just started learning about quantum computing um, just because you pretty much mentioned it. I've heard Michio Kaku mention it before. I didn't really find it that fascinating. I looked into it a little bit back then, but uh, and I still don't understand it. But uh, I I've been learning about uh, this name Scott Aronson. Scott Aronson is probably the leading man in quantum computing, as far as I know. Uh, maybe he's not. Maybe he is. Maybe he works with someone else. Um, but a very interesting character. And there is a really good video on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, you should watch it. Um, a speech that he gave at Carnegie Mellon Institute, and he's not a very good um, social person either. Like, I I admire people that don't do things that people expect them to do. You know, this cultural, social shit. It's just all of it, 
it just seems so boring. You know, I would so much. I would rather be in the jungle. I really would. I'm so much happier. Um, I wish. You know. I wish that's the way it was. I wish that's what I was born into. You know. I'd love to have computers in the jungle. You know, I'm really glad that we live at this time um, in space exploration. That's one of my biggest passions as well. I mean, one of the things I'm, I'm proudest of as far as the uh, human race goes. I even have uh, one of the original newspapers. I got that for $20 at an antique mall here in town. So it's first color moon photos. The Detroit News from, uh, from 1965. Oh, what are we at? 46 minutes. Um, I definitely need to keep it under an hour. I could, I could stop it right now. Yeah, that's that's about it. Just think about that. I, I think the capacitor is a good way to go. Oh, and the thought experiment that you wanted, the magnetism and fire, and the uh, emergence. I did think about that some more when I woke up, and I kind of felt that uh, I didn't. I I certainly didn't do any sort of justice or uh, whatever it is. I didn't play along. Um, but I did think about it a little bit more while I was sitting and, uh, waking up. And, uh, I don't know, I guess a good example of it, or, or something that came to my mind was, uh, erosion and, uh, the distribution of material on the surface of the earth and why are planets not perfect spheres or or um, perfect ellipsoids even when it's not smooth you know I mean I, I think back um, you know maybe 700 billion years ago or not billion excuse me 700 million or, or even more I mean like a billion years ago um, and just what the surface of earth was like and I, I don't I've never seen any pictures that uh, have put dates on them, uh, as far as I'm aware. They go back farther than a billion years. But I'd really be interested to know what it was like um, and just what happened. And I mean, I understand uh, stratigraphy and uh, geology, plate tectonics, you know. And I imagine when uh, the Proto moon, it has a name, I forget. Um, moon, um, I don't know. Uh, Earth, two. But when that hit, probably that's what that's what got things started. You know, I imagine when it was forming, it was pretty even. After a while. Well, it was still molten, pretty much. Um, but yeah, man, only a couple hundred million years. And you got life going. And uh, that's that's the time that I really wonder about the most. But this is already almost 50 minutes, so... I will stop. Um, still really haven't done them erosion and that and how things settle um, gravity pulls things down the plates push them up um, I still I don't really feel like I'm doing it justice I'm, I'm not I don't know the rules of the game well enough to be a good competitor
but you can just make a different game. Or I'll play Euchre, you play Poker, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, Oh, I was going to draw you a picture. Um, I think I pretty much said it, though. With the, uh, for the capacitor, essentially what life is and how it gets stimulated. Um, just thinking of it like consciousness. I'm trying to avoid doing this, but you're kind of making it seem almost like it's necessary to make consciousness as a thing. Or the mind as a thing. You know as opposed to a system, you know, or a whole bunch of systems all tangled together, which it's what it is, you know. It's not a thing. You really got to get over it. This, this subjective consciousness is just bullshit. But, I know a lot of you are going to find it really difficult, and some of you may never let it go. But, uh, it's just it's like religion, man, 2,000 years ago, they didn't know science. You know, they had philosophy and religion. We're, we're good without religion, right? We can be good without philosophy. But, nonetheless, I think it's a good foundation. I do. I think it's, uh, it's good to a point. It's good to, uh, get the, get the brain going, asking questions. It's so powerful. And, uh, we'll never know. We'll never know at all. We can't, can we? Only if we connected to each other. Um, maybe then. We'd know a lot more. We wouldn't have to waste so much time. You know. That's, that's the worst thing about this. About being separate. You know. I'm just, I love constantly learning. You know, watching your videos. And reading comments. And Wikipedia articles. And going around and reading, you know, papers, people publish, and, uh, it's nice, it's nice just to learn and not to have to regurgitate it, you know, just to know that it's there, it's, it makes you feel nice, I imagine that's why so many people like, uh, their books, their holy books. would like to get past all that, get past uh, getting stuck and letting uh, religion or even philosophy um, gum up the works and bog us down and, you know, it's the same questions over and over again, you know, just come up with new questions. I don't know if that's a field of philosophy. Uh, if it is, let me know. Um, but as it stands, I'll stick with science. <laughs>